وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala I now want to go into um, the, the people who go extreme in negligent when it comes to refutation There are people who when it comes to refutation they, they are on the opposite of the group that we mentioned in our previous uh, episode and that is this obligation of refuting, refuting, they don't like it. They're against it. And they've turned away from it in its totality. And they claim, let's observe wuhdatul muslimin, the unity of the Muslims. Let's not divide, let's not break our ranks. And so they speak nothing about innovation, misguidance, none of that. And all they do is they warn you all the time from this issue of refuting. Don't refute, leave refutation. Why? Leave it. There's extremism in that as well. ولذلك الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية when it came to أهل الزيغ والضلال والذابين عنهم the people of misguidance and who've deviated from the truth and those who defend them defending the people of misguidance ابن تيمية رحمه الله he said ويجب عقوبة كل من انتسب إليهم they should be punished, all of the ones who attribute themselves to this misguidance. Or ذَبْعَنْهُمْ Or defends the innovators. He comes and he says, Ya Akhi, why are you speaking about the Sufiya? Why? Leave them alone. Don't say anything about them. Or أَثْنَى عَلَيْهِمْ Or he praises them. Or أَعْظَمَ كُتُبَهُمْ Or he glorifies their books, their works, such as إِحْيَا عُلُومُ الدِّينَ and books like that. Or he's known to aid them and support them. Or he hates anyone saying anything about them. Or he gives excuses to them. Or they will come to you and they will say to you, he didn't intend to say this in his speech. Or he wasn't the one who authored this. وَأَمْثَالِي وَأَمْثَالَ هَذِهِ الْمَعَاذِيرِ And they give you these weak excuses التي لا يقولها إلا جاهل أو منافق The only one that's going to say this is an ignorant person or a hypocrite بل تجب عقوبة كل من عرف حالهم It is obligatory to punish everybody who knows the situation of these people ولم يعاون على القيام عليهم and does not aid and support the people of the sunnah in standing against them فإن القيام على هؤلاء من أعظم الواجبات to stand against these type of people who are giving excuses to the innovators to stand against them is, is from أعظم الواجبات ابن تيمية says لأنهم أفسدوا العقولة والأديانة because these people they've corrupted the people's minds and the people's religion على خلق من المشايخ والعلماء والملوك والأمراء they have harmed many of the مشايخ there are also many of the scholars, many of the muluk and the umara. They go to the leader and they sit under him and they say, sure, these people are fine, leave them. Only they, they're only just doing dhikr and twirling in, uh, and going in circles in their own masjids. But in truth, they're spreading corruption on this earth. And they're blocking the people from the path of Allah. The harm these people have is worse than the ones who are harming the people's دنيا ويترك دينهم كقطاع الطريق وكالتتار الذين يأخذون منهم الأموال ويبقون لهم دينهم Many harm have come from these people Shaykh Hussain Tim's kalam is very long but you guys got the gist of what he's saying رحمه الله تعالى These people great harm has come from their methodology and their way We've seen it The first one is Within their mist أقوال الباطلة and الأهواء المزرية spreads amongst them Misguidance, statements of falsehood, all of it spreads in their midst. No problem. In the Rasul Ma'alim al-Din, on Tima's Haqqa'iqi, the symbols of Islam, the milestones of Islam, all of it perishes 
and the reality of it. And the foundation of the religion is corrupted in their, in their presence. The corruption, brothers and sisters, that it could have on this earth if shirk spreads, bid'ah spreads, munkarat spread, no problem. The whole issue is no problem, difference of opinion. The bid'ah difference of opinion. You hear one of some of them say, Billahi alayk, ya akhi, let's not refute Mawlid al-Nabawi. Let's grow out of this. Let's not refute Mawlid al-Nabawi. Let's leave it. Let's Let's look at the bigger picture. Let's unite. That person is, what is he? What is he, what are you trying to achieve? It's an innovation. It's added to the deen of Islam. We want this religion to be pure and clean. That's it, khalas. As long as they're doing it, this refutation will come. Uh, no, leave them alone, akhi. We uh, need to unite now. Get over all of this. Okay. From the things that we see from them is inqilabul muwazin. The scales have turned. Contradiction in their understanding. If you look at them, their perception is so confused in things. Prioritization, wrong, all of it. Nuzul al-Uqubat al Allah's punishment are coming down on us as people because of the silence of refuting the people of innovation. Because of us allowing the symbols of Islam to be perished, to be destroyed. Brothers and sisters, ask yourself a very important question. Why did Allah Taala curse Banu uh, Israel on the tongue of Dawood and Isa ibn Maryam. Allah says, "Lu'ina al-ladina kafaru min bani Israel ala lisani Dawood wa Isa ibn Maryam." Dalika bi ma'asa wa kanu yatadun. Kanu la yatanahuna an munkarin fa'aluhu la bi'sa ma kanu yafalun. They were cursed, Banu Israel, on the tongue of Dawood and Isa ibn Maryam. Why? Because of the sins that they were doing, and also because they were not calling each other to the good, and they were not prohibiting each other from the evil. Al-Amr ibn Maruf and Naal al-Munkar wasn't done. And so Allah Taala cursed them, Subhanahu wa Taala, and that's what's going to happen to us if we let the falsehood stay. We don't say anything about it; we'll be cursed. And Wallahi, shirk is a shirk is what shirk is munkar that needs to be stopped. Bida is a munkar that needs to be stopped. The yani the ma'asi, whether they were sagair or kabair, they need to be stopped. They need to be spoken against. All of these issues should be clarified and they should be spoken about like in brothers and sisters with good manners. Don't be vulgar in defending the sunnah. Many people, they try to defend the deen by saying, yeah, any vulgar speech. You see people on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and, and YouTube saying, I'm defending the sunnah. Hey, how are you going to defend it? From the beginning to the end, he's insulting. Actually, the sunnah doesn't need to be defended in that manner. Bring the evidences, bring the truth. Don't insult a name call. Okay? Speak the truth. The haq already is going to become clear by just mentioning the Quran and the Sunnah. Brothers and sisters, insults and yani, vulgar words. Yani, insults not even the issue alone by itself. That's even worse than that, which is what? Vulgar speech we've seen some people use. Inna wa inna Who's going to take the truth from you? If you're presenting the truth in that manner and in the way that you do it. Brothers and sisters, remember whatever you write, whatever you write on somewhere, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold you account for it yawm al qiyamah. Everything you're writing is going to be written for you. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَرَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبِلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينُ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدِ مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ There's not something, there's not anything that you utter except that it's written. Everything that you say. So remember what you say, are you, are you happy to meet Allah with it يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Whatever you've written somewhere, are you happy to meet Allah يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ with it? That's what you have to ask yourself. Don't just speak because you can speak. And don't ever try to think to yourself that you can defend the religion by insulting it. I mean, that's not how the deen needs to be sold. By the way, brothers and sisters, insult and name calling is not knowledge. Anyone can do that. The non-Muslim can do that. The non-Muslim has many vocabulary on insulting and name calling. That's not an art. That's not a science. That's not a knowledge. Anyone can do that. Okay, brothers and sisters. Ilm. Qala Allah, qala Rasul, and qala Sahaba. When you're responding to somebody, brothers and sisters, and you're refuting someone, don't bring the natija in the beginning. 
Some people, they, Fulan is a mubtadi'ah. He's a dalun mudil. They bring the natija, the conclusion at the beginning. If you, if you want to you know, bring the points, first of all, drive the point home. Mention the evidences from the Quran that the person has gone against. Evidences from the Sunnah that the person has gone against. The aqwalu salaf salih that the person has gone against. And then bring the conclusion at the end. Because the people are with you. They understand where you're going with it. Uh, the natija, the conclusion, let's first agree on the muqaddimah. Ah, that's important. And that's what's happening. So you spend 45 minutes mentioning Mubtadi, Dalun, Mudillun, Adalun min Himari, Ahlihi, and you keep saying all of that. And then at the end, when it comes to, okay, what's the evidence? You, you have nothing. It's not a way to defend the deen. If you look at our scholars that we've seen, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymeen, Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al Din al Albani, Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz, the likes of these great scholars of Islam. They brought evidences, proofs, barahin, hujaj, when they refuted. You read their rudud. Look at the rudud of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Utaymiyyah. Tata'ajjab. Yani, some of the quotes that we're mentioning from ibn Utaymiyyah are from a refutation he gave. Yani, ta'asil, qawa'id, principles that he's putting down. Amazing that you'll be shocked with. So, my, my point, brothers and sisters, is don't go to ghulu, or don't ifrat or tafrit. Be in the middle. The middle that Allah and His Messenger sanctioned. And that's what's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to stop there inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahu wa bihamdi ashadu la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.